To accomplish anything in life, you have to have a foundation on how you get there. So like if you want to squat 225 pounds, first you have to be able to squat the bar. If you want to be able to read, you first have to know the alphabet. If you want to get into high school, you have to get through middle school. If you want to be able to like win at a video game, you have to know how to play the video game. And if you want to jump over eight rolls of toilet paper, five, four, three, two, one, let go. Level up, 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 level up. You first have to jump over one roll of toilet paper. And to get to the other side of the unknown, you have to have a moment that you can look back on and remember that God is faithful and that he is going to be with you no matter what. Three days. That's how long the Israelites had been camped on the bank of the Jordan. And I wonder if every morning Joshua would walk down to the river, maybe put his toes in the water or skip a rock and look across and think, how am I going to do this? How am I going to get all these people to the other side of this river? I can't swim. A lot of them are old and we have too much stuff and people might drown. I can't build a bridge, I can't start from the other side. There might be something in the water that could hurt us, like a parasite or some type of a snake. The Jordan River is bigger than this one. And that year there had been a lot of rain, it had been a really heavy harvest season, and so the banks were overflowing from that river. I wonder if we sat and looked at the water and thought, I don't know how we're going to get across this thing that's in front of us. God had told Joshua how he wanted him to get across the river. And to be honest, Joshua was probably thinking about it and thought it was a little crazy. The way that God was with his people back then is he had them make this box, and in that box they kept things like the Ten Commandments and Moses' staff and all these things to remember like what God had done for them. And so what God told Joshua to do is to have some people carry this box, the box is called the Ark of the Covenant, and to take it out into the river. It's about like knee deep. And so these guys have this big box in the river and Joshua, not knowing if this is going to work or not, he looks up to all the people on the beach and he says, today God is going to show you that forever he will be with you no matter what. So come on in. And all the people start to walk into the water. And as they do that, wherever the Ark of the Covenant is sitting, the Jordan River starts to build up like a wall and it starts to just go dry on the other side. And this impossible thing happens for them to get past this impossible river. And as they walk on dry ground through the river, they step foot on the other side to the land that God had promised them, the land that God had been faithful to provide for them. When Joshua was on the other side of the river, he looked around amazed at all the families who had gotten by and he knew that he had to do something to mark this moment, something to remember that God had been faithful. So he found a bunch of stones and he stacked them up so that he could look back and remember that God had gotten them through the unknown and brought them to his promised land. And Joshua was going to need to remember that God was going to be faithful no matter what they walked through. What God had Joshua and the Israelites do next is he wanted them to go to this city called Jericho to destroy it and how they were supposed to take it over is they were just going to walk around it once a day for six days and then on the seventh day the walls were supposed to fall down. And that's a pretty crazy way to go in to destroy a city. That's not like a good military strategy. But what the Israelites did is they kept remembering back to this moment where they set up these rocks and marked that God had been faithful here so they knew that they could trust God with the next crazy thing he was telling them to do. Back in last February in 2019, my wife and I started doing foster care um, and in, we got this little baby boy from the hospital. Um, he was our first foster baby and we hadn't had any biological children so he was kind of just this you know really special baby that we had in our house and you know we took him everywhere he went on family vacations with us and everything was going really great and during the time that we had him um, I started to imagine what a future with him would look like you know I started thinking about like what it would look like to take him to his first day of school 
or what it would look like to like drop him off at youth sports and watch him take his first steps and eventually go to college. And I let myself kind of imagine this great future I would have with him. And then after we had had him for about five months, we had our monthly week uh, meeting with our social workers and they came in and we're, I was sitting down in one chair, the social workers were all sitting on my couch and my wife was sitting on the floor playing with Ryland's feet. Um, and the social worker started the conversation by saying, hey, this is gonna be tough, um, but we think it's best for Rylan to start making the transition to go back home with his mom. When she said that, I got this lump in my throat and I got really sad because that whole future that I had made up was in that one sentence, gone. And it was probably the same feeling that you got when your senior season of soccer got canceled or when prom got canceled or when you found out you couldn't hang out with your friends or you weren't going to be able to go to youth group or whatever that is, you had had this plan for what you wanted for your life and in one sentence it's different and you just had to figure out how am I going to live my life in this unknown. And so over time that sadness for me really turned into a lot of anger. Um, I was really angry at God and that spoiled out into me being angry with like everyone around me and my conversation with God kind of went like this it was like God if you really cared about me and you cared about the situation you wouldn't let this happen you would you would fix this you would stop this you wouldn't make us all go through this unknown and for a while I started to just think there's nothing good that God can do with this but then I remembered that God has been faithful to me this to this point and he'll continue to be faithful to me no matter what. I was still angry, I was still really sad, but over time I started to feel a little bit better about the whole thing. Um, you know, like looking at like it's a good thing that, that he gets to go back with his mom. Those feelings were all still there, I just kind of changed how I looked at it and trusted that God would be faithful with what he's given us. And then the day, that day came. Um, I'll never forget it. We had him most of the day Social workers came over and, and through a lot of tears, um, we eventually walked out. We walked out the front door and down to the car and my wife was carrying him. And then I asked the, the, the worker if I could put him in the car seat for one last time. And so I, I put him in the car seat, I buckled him up, I kissed him on the forehead, and then I shut the door. And through blurry eyes, I watched him drive away. And then I turned around, and with God, I walked back into the unknown. So as the weeks went by over time, we actually built a relationship with his mom. Um, and she started coming to Flatirons with us, and eventually she was talking about wanting to be baptized. And God actually let my wife and I play a really big part in her story, and we got to baptize her. Um, and we got to create this moment for her where she could look back and remember that during this time, God was faithful when she didn't see any other way of him being able to be faithful. Um, and after we baptized her, I was sitting in my car at the back of Flatirons Longmont, and I remember praying, like, God, <laughs> this moment has been so real for me that I can never doubt your faithfulness again. I know that you'll be with me no matter what. So years and years after Joshua and the Israelites crossed that river, there's this guy named John who's baptizing people in that same river, probably pretty close to where they crossed. Um, and one day when he's doing that, John's cousin, Jesus, this guy that we talk about all the time, comes and he gets baptized. And when Jesus gets baptized, something happens that almost has never happened before. God speaks audibly. And God says, this is my son with who I am well pleased. And then after that moment, Jesus goes on to do all the things that we constantly talk about him doing, including when Jesus is hanging on a cross. So when Jesus is hanging on the cross, he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because Jesus knows that he's about to go into the unknown and he doesn't know what's gonna happen on the other side of that. But I think that Jesus is just remembering that 
When he got baptized, that was a moment that he knew that God was going to be with him no matter what and that God was going to be faithful. And a few minutes after Jesus says that, he dies. And he's dead for three days. But on the third day, God brings Jesus back to life and Jesus is on the other side of the unknown. And through Jesus coming back to life, we all have the ability to walk through the other side of the unknown. So whatever that unknown is for you, um, that might be going to college, or maybe it's going to a new school, or maybe it's taking a step to do something that you don't know um, what's gonna happen, or what God's telling you to do might seem kind of crazy. But whatever that unknown is for you, if you want to have a moment to look back on and remember that God is gonna be faithful and he's gonna be able to get me through this no matter what, we would love it if you would consider that moment to be baptism. Okay, so I know that there's all this social distancing going on and to actually do a baptism might be kind of hard, but if that's a moment that you want to have and you don't want to go through the unknown without having something to hold on to, reach out to your leader or to your campus student director or talk to your parents about it and we would love to figure out how we can make baptism happen for you. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into the place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love.